family planning is a very delicate issue and many people shy away from having a conversation about that topic. But research has shown that adolescents as young as 10 and 11 are taking that decision boldly by walking to the health facility to make a choice. Come with me and let's explore this topic. Contraceptives are the name given to medicines and other devices to prevent unwanted pregnancy. Contraceptives may also be referred to as birth control. Hormonal contraceptive consists of one or more synthetic female sex hormones. In times past, you expect couples who are planning their families to enroll on their choice of contraceptives. Condoms, though another popular birth control method, is often used to preach against sexually transmitted diseases. Condoms are thin pouches that keep sperm from getting into the vagina. There are male and female condoms. Condoms do not protect against infections spread from sores on the skin, not covered by a condom, such as the base of the penis or scrotum. Couples having sex must always use condoms to protect against STDs, even when using another birth control methods. Abstinence, not having sex, is the only method that always prevents pregnancy and STDs. Family planning is um, deciding on when to have your children and then the interval you want to have your children. But when it comes to adolescents taking family planning, like you said, they are sexually active. They are not married. They have partners and they are sexually active. So they also want to prevent pregnancy. So that is why they're going for family planning. So if this is what family planning is, what has that got to do with children and ruling on it? But it wasn't the case before. What is the problem? So I wouldn't say it's too much education, but in, in the bit to reduce teenage pregnancy, Education has gone on, there's been a series of education over the years on prevention of pregnancy. And one of the ways of preventing pregnancy in adolescents is the use of family planning, since most of them are sexually active. Yeah. Public health nurse Dr. Sahaji explains further the different types of family planning. Yeah, well, long acting, anania, a woman, a beche, and sana, the effect, no, I died down. Yeah, well, short acting. In the short acting, a bit is a pills. Now you fan and no, or ba no be fan the bia. Yeah, well, injectables and as a panya yeah well. We be one either three months now one month. And a long acting is yeah well implants and no no a idea. It's a plastic rod or ba no the best. I have say now we for three years and now say for five years. And I have an IUD, 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 10 years. And I have an condoms, and this is a form of family planning. And I have an IUD, and I have an IUD, and male sterilization. And I have an IUD, 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 and I have an IUD. This community, for instance, where you work, how often do you see adolescents at what age coming, asking questions or wanting to get on family planning? Family planning. So as a municipality, we, we do get adolescents, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years, asking questions on family planning. <coughs> sorry. And then some of them on the, <coughs> sorry, coming in for family or asking questions on family planning. As a health directorate, we go in for school health services. Okay. So we speak to <coughs> the adolescents on reproductive health issues. And one of the topics are on family planning. So you get adolescents asking questions on family planning as early as 10 years, 11 years, and even coming in for the services. I caught up with some teens between the ages of 13 and 19 for a chat on this subject. I, I know it's used to prevent the sperms from growing in a, in a woman. And I, I also learned 
It helps in preventing of pregnancy, unwanted pregnancies. Please, they said uh, contraceptive is good for um, those who have sex, but as a child, it, there is no need for you to use a contraceptive because it's not good for you. Have you heard of contraceptive? Yes, I've heard of contraceptive before. Okay, have you used some? No place by a friend. According to her, it did not go well with her. After they put her on the plan, she was hoping that it would go on well. But unfortunately, it did not go on well that, as she was expecting. Because she was bleeding at the same time. By the time she got to know that it wasn't working, by then she was already pregnant. Let's meet three girls with peculiar stories to tell. This is Amma, not her real name. She is 17 and a GHS graduate. She has already had her shot with contraceptives. She has very little knowledge about family planning in general. She is actually unaware that the method is intended to prevent pregnancy. Ama is on implant, which is hormonal. It is a small rod placed under the skin in the upper arm by a healthcare provider to prevent pregnancy 99% of the time. The implant, which lasts for three years, releases the hormone progestin to stop the ovaries from releasing eggs, and it thickens cervical mucus, so it is difficult for sperm to enter the uterus. She tells me her aunt took the decision to put her on family planning without any explanation. Okay. So mm. you say we are now we are the same age. We are the same age. It's what auntie you. Hmm. What is your boyfriend? Yeah, Mr. Mikko, no one. I say, me ne ne have sex. I na me ne have ye. If it too I am ye dem. I sought to test if Ama would opt for family planning when she gets to her adult life. I try. You better say obey, man. Annabelle, not her real name, is 19 years. She completed senior high school in 2021. She wants to be a fire officer in future. She decided on her own to take the injectable to prevent pregnancy because she had a boyfriend. Me here for three months, but me no be a me anything to me chai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me for three months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ni panu onye obi She tells me she did not even think about STIs when she took the family planning method. And shut down by ye because of a droning tea. Now, and bad cement mansion, a woman, a back a Caribbean age. I wouldn't hear you put in your STIs. Pregnancy, be so what do you think about STIs? No, because it's an indona banu. It's a feeling in your manoma. And I think it's a fine planning your best. Because I don't know for three months. I don't know if I was me. I me because I'm a person who is pregnant. I'm a person who is pregnant. I think so. I'm a person who is pregnant. is not sure of her age, but the healthcare provider says she may be 20 years now. She is from Yegbo in the northern region. She got married quite young. She has a three year old daughter. Her data in the health record says last year she came in at 19 when her child was two years to opt for family planning. She has no formal education. She said she wanted to space her childbearing. Now you couldn't say me, baby. I don't know, me, baby. 
na wampesee mishahada ana ana mibaya na madam ni yeye uko ka so mpesee ebe shelu bisanza dinti mambisano Na mi si ma pese mi wo ntam ka me ba no so mi pese o nyi asa ana ona se o pe obi a o be ware ne na o mpa akwala o be wo ma ne na ntina ni be yi ni Fusina says now she is a little worried as she is not able to conceive though she has gone off the family yeah. planning Ntia ka o be yi e no wo kun no pese o wo to aso pese o wo bi Juliana Jampo is a community health nurse at the Malamata Government Clinic. She says some adolescents as young as 15 sometimes walk in by themselves seeking her assistance to prevent pregnancies. She has attended and taken hundreds of adolescents through this process. She says Talking these adolescent girls out of going ahead is not an option. You are pure, no? And we daily. Whether so only be a man or be da, when and in that, you have to take it every day. And then we have the implant, no? That is three years. And then we have jadel, which is five years. And then the condom. And you want to buy a church in which you want to. And you can prefer so again. Family planning, they are in to sum the person's choice. In your personal year, no, then we do it for the person. And I want to say, because you say family planning method, you can change it any time. And say, be a name about me, so can be one month. We be all one month. We call. I feel there. We call dream house. So one month in the class is too short. So I want the three months. So I want the long term. And to buy a very amount, and you can change it at any time. Normally, so almost I no buy. It be a mother and be a school. It be a me be a school. Beso Benyins and school no cray near cra and tea be a long term a man and they be a mother nan a bit too soon and a nippan and be banana bit too soon method on a man. Who is a name you my own and to set it in and name a my one win or more yen near my be a ensign fatta. But in nippan a be a one year, not just so be a wussy say. Into one year ready so be a wussy say no. No Benyins and no be a quack way abortion in the end called Bonnie Hobbaya, a few sank a year. So which is better, that these young adolescents are unaware of contraceptives and are taking such decisions to primarily prevent pregnancies or to stay away and end up with pregnancies? The best thing is, Anka, don't worry, Anka, you have to abstain from sex. But since I need to person, you can not prevent the person. And you can be being to say too much of everything is bad. We yet say too much. At least me sure say the first to be better. Uh -huh. But in Nippon, no, you can cry for some time. I mean, who says so? Mm -hmm. And now you can change the method. If you have been on a method for so long, you can switch to another method. Mm -hmm. Normally, you say, Binum, but you can so. Say, family planning now, baby, it doesn't give you lances. You bet me your STI. It's only for pregnancy. It's not so you can such a long time. How young? The youngest you have ever had here? The youngest is 15 years. 15. Oh, no buy. Oh, school or GSS. Oh, so family planning, the umbana beside be or see at sea or radio, so near there, on some mobile with the re a contraceptives, a one with the rule, TV, so near radio, near the end. Your motte. Now, times they be a higher co school, so no so near Moko Casa. Say they have to abstain, but you wouldn't me abstain it there. Then you have to come and do family planning and go to school health and so on. You know, Mokasa.
And those were highlights of a documentary put together by Martha Krenzel Aqua. Uh, the full thing will air later. She will, give, she will join us and share all those details. But it's a, a very interesting piece about teens on contraceptives. Martha Krenzel Aqua has joined me. Hello, Martha. It's been a while. It's good to see you on television. Um, you should have seen the reaction uh, here when we saw you do that piece to camera. But I'm more interested in what prompted this story. Why did you decide to work on this? Thank you very much, Dennis, and good morning. Good to see you. I see you always on TV, <laughs> so it's good to see you again. Right. Uh, this conversation started from an informal conversation I had with a friend who was telling me about how a woman has taken her own daughter to the clinic to put her on family planning because the girl cannot abstain from sex. And so the woman was looking at her investments in her daughter and decided, then let me put her on something that is long term. So I'll leave her to continue with whatever she was doing. And so I was surprised. So after that, I decided to speak to one of the foremost people I spoke to was Dr. Chian, Dr. Mariana Ponsachian, and she confirmed that really it is happening and mentioned the age. So this girl, the first one that prompted it was 16. And then she mentioned age younger than that. And so I was surprised. If you have younger people doing that, then let me go further and check some of the health facilities and see if it is widespread or it's just um, a one-off case. And unfortunately, it's widespread. Um, much later, I would um, share a story with you about how I also um, got to know about how young people are now getting onto contraceptives or using some form of family planning and why I was disturbed about it. And I'm really glad that you've done this story. Uh, but Martha, just on the point where we, we came to you, um, the, the nurse you were talking to was talking about children walking in 15. And I'm thinking to myself, is that permitted? Can a 15-year-old who is still under the care of a guardian or a parent who is legally considered a minor take such a decision on their own? Are there laws that prevent health practitioners from administering these contraceptives to these people or these young girls without consent from their parents? Just tell us more um, on that if you covered that uh, legal angle in the story, in the documentary, so I rather. Didn't go into, I didn't go into detail, and so I hope that we have a healthcare person on the line who will explain that to us. Mm. But when I did the interview with um, one of the nurses, not Juliana Jampo, that's the one you're referring to, she says 15 is the youngest she had attended to. The earlier, the health, the public health nurse said 10, 11, and 12. They come in, and I said, but these are children. And she said, yes, once they can take decisions to have sex, they can take decisions on how they want to protect themselves. So I asked, when they walk in and they don't come with a parent or a guardian, don't you turn them away? We said, if you turn them away, they will still continue to do it. We have the forms, we speak to them, we counsel them, we do the ABC counseling, and then we ask them where they head from. And most of the time, the worrying trend for her is that they already know what they want. And so they come in and they just want to be on contraceptives. They tell you, I want the injectable, I want the pill, I want this. They don't even opt for the pill. They don't like the pill mm. because it's too much to take that every day. They cannot um, do that. They don't like condoms as well. So they prefer to be on the injectable or the um, implant, the one that is put in the arm, that releases hormones into your system. So it sounded more like they don't really go into the legal part of it. Mm. That once the child is actively having sex and comes in, the best thing is to do it for. So the, one of the healthcare providers said, which one do you prefer? That I don't do it for her, she goes ahead and has sex, gets pregnant, attempts to abort, and dies. Is that what you want me to do? So once they come in, as you said, they are adolescents. So she actually defined that the World Health Organization um, definition of adolescence starts from, I think, 11 to 19. So you have the early adolescents, and then you have the late adolescents. And so they are not even teens. Don't call them. They are adolescents. They can make some of these decisions on their own. Mm. 
Right, Martha, thankfully, I, I have Caesar Kaba Koboziga. He is lead uh, programs coordinator at the Plant Parenthood Association of Ghana, PPAG. Um, good morning to you. I'm sure there are a lot of parents who are wondering, why should my child walk into a health facility, get a family planning without my consent when they live under my roof and legally they are still considered minors do you have the law on your side in this case as a health official to say i still have to administer it anyway if the child wants it yeah thank you very much and i must say um a very good thank you to join me for bringing these very important conversations up in, in our national discourse uh, I feel like you that uh, beyond the normal hardcore politics, these are things that have to be discussed. But as we go into these conversations, we usually want to caution that in as much as we have our own personal biases and values, it's important to lay bare the facts and the laws that we work in, because fortunately we are in a democratic country. And what are the facts here? The facts are that uh, in Ghana, sex is permissible for anybody who attains 16 years or more. That the law allows any young person about uh, uh, 16 or 16 or above to have sexual intercourse. But let me also be quick to add that there's also a, a law that does not allow them to get married before 18. So there's a gap of about two years. And so just to think of it, even before we go further, is to say that if there is a law that allows people to have sex when they are 16 but not get married, the only thing they can do to not get pregnant that will push them into marriage would have been to use contraception. Even though it is not in the law that they should go and use the contraception. By, by thinking, I think that should be the, the, the inspiration behind it. But let me also say that, like you were saying, um, the adolescent health policy of Ghana and even international best practices forbids any nurse from turning away an adolescent who comes to access contraception. Okay. And so the, the, the nurses in the facilities that are providing the services are actually uh, working with a law that mandates them to do so. So it is not as if they are using their discretion. They are supposed to do what they are doing. But let me go further to say that Beyond the contraception conversation, we must remember that there are hundreds of thousands of adolescent girls who get pregnant every year. And let me quickly mention that between 2016 and 2020, and I think Joy News was uh, fortunately the one that broke this news publicly to our nation again, that about 55,000 adolescent girls got pregnant in, in that period, 55,000. And that 55,000 is not just a girl, it's another dependent they are bringing. So if you want to develop a nation, it is clear that these numbers are not allowed. But let me add even more frustration for us in the world that out of this, about 13,000 girls were between the ages of 10 and 14 years. Can you say so, that again? 13,000 girls? Yes, 13,000 adolescent girls were between the ages of 10 and 14 years. And this is Ghana Health Service data, not, not I. And the other 542,000 were between 15 and 19 years. There's nobody who is 20 years in this time. So for me, in this field, that I see these statistics, mm. the 10, 10 to 14 years are, are clearly defilement cases. And even 15 years, it is clear that if someone has sex below 15 years or 15 years and below, the person has been defiled. Mm -hmm. And so in a nation that we care about the adolescent, our priority should have been to put in systems that will prevent the defilement, that will stop them from getting abused. But if we interact with these girls, the basic reason why they have sex is not for pleasure. For most of them, it's for survival, for basic needs like sanitary parts like indoor needs, like accommodation, very basic needs that a working state or nation should have been providing for them. So for me, if we want to protect the adolescent girls, then it has to, we, we have made it individual. So they have to take their own defense mechanisms and protective mechanisms. So if we see these adolescent girls picking up contraception, 
I in the throne will be deflated, not because of my, my moral lens, but because of the facts on the ground that if these are the facts, and the adolescents have taken their own protection into their own house after getting empowerment, then we should be deflating as a league. It's a good sign. Mm. Because other than that, what we'll be seeing will be school dropouts, will be uh, uh, unsafe abortions and death, will be um, uh, a lot of uh, teenage pregnancies like we saw in, in the years that I just mentioned. Mm. So instead of, for me, instead of focusing on they exercising their right to access contraception to protect themselves, we should be happy and be, be thinking of how to put these mechanisms in place to protect them from getting into the sexual acts in the first place. I, I'll come back to you, Caesar, because in this story put together by Martha Krenzel Aqua, we see young girls who are visiting health um, facilities to get onto contraceptives. But there's the other hand where some girls do not do it the right way. I'll come for us to explore that angle. But let me now bring Joyce Lanyo, Programs Manager, International Child Development Program. It's great to have you here, Mom. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking to myself, Mr. Kaba there has spoken about a moral and a legal lens, okay? So morally, there are many Ghanaians who may feel that this is inappropriate. You can have kids getting onto contraceptives, um, but the law permits it, as he's told us, um, and they are not allowed to turn girls away when they come to access contraceptives. But then again, the other hand is you, you're not expecting a child between 10 years and 14 to be having sex in the first place. What is your thinking around that? Should they be turning such girls away? Because if they're having sex at that age, it means that they're being defiled. They're not permitted by law to be doing so. So, I mean, it's a thorny issue, but what is your perspective and understanding to this? Thank you very much, and uh, good morning to your viewers. Um, it, it's rather sad that my brother from PPA used to say that we should be jubilating if children are able to walk in into these service centers to us access contraceptive. Please, I beg to differ. Because we are talking about children. Children, indeed. If these children are to be allowed to access contraceptive to prevent pregnancy, what about the sexually uh, transmitted infections that are also on the way? What about the HIV, which is the elephant in the house? What are we talking about it? I find it very, very unfortunate that our brother from the PPAG should talk about it. Now, where contraceptives play a very key role, there are negative impacts on its usage. Even we, the adults, we have challenges when we use it. And to the same for children to go to these centers and choose what they want. They want injectables, they want uh, uh, what this or that, I bet to differ. When we say children or a so, child... Um, sorry, sorry to interject, but what we know and what we've heard from the PPAG is that when these kids come, they're not just given what they say they want. They are taken through counselling, told what the pros and cons are, and they make a decision. The assumption is... Once the child is having sex, and he has said the law allows 15 years and above to have sex, 18 marriage. So if a 15-year-old, for example, walks into a health facility and says, give me a contraceptive, it is within their rights. So far as the law allows them to have sex. The, the problem is those who fall below that category, who are, in this case, as we are told, 10 to 14 years. Um, and, and so I would just like us to stay within what they are legally required and allowed to do um, compared to how parents also feel about this. Because sometimes an 18-year-old is even under the care of a parent and the parent will want to know what that child is doing and all that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Granted what you have just said, children are always children. These contraceptives that we are opening up to them have emotional, psychological effects 
according to the field research that is way. So children cannot just walk in and access contraceptives, notwithstanding their ages 10 to 14 or 16 to 18. That is the standard where we would use to describe a child. What is it that the child needs? That sex is so important to his life rather than his education and would want to go and access contraception. And, and, and sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to interject again, but we also know that many of this, these girls, like uh, Mr. Kaba said, do not go for sex because of pleasure. Some of them have to meet certain needs. In some cases, we know that girls sleep with men because they want money to buy some, you know, items, things that they will need to survive on. So isn't it just bigger than making it look like these girls may just be promiscuous um, seeing that some of them actually do this out of necessity and not just because they want to have pleasure. Yes, and I appreciate all these arguments. But I'm saying that a, a child from the age of 10 to 14, due to lack of fat, consumable, fat, or indomie, or what? I don't know what it is that to open the flat gate for children as young as 10 to 14 to be able to walk in into a center and then access some of these services, whether they are below the age of 14 and they are 15 and above. It, it, it's something we, we should take a critical look or there should be policy and regulation concerning these things. Because look, for me, when I was coming and I was a young mother giving birth, at the time when I started this contraceptive, the issue about bleeding, setting, the issue about palpitation came in, the issue about emotional stress, which I was uh, venting on my, my younger, because I didn't even know what I was doing, and all was attributed to this contraceptive. So these children at these ages that are accessing these things, have we considered the psychological and emotional uh, stresses that they will be going through? What do they know that they can choose and pick what they want? Mm. Where are the parents? Who send them there? Is it because of the underlying issue of poverty? We should now introduce our children to uh, 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 contraceptives. Where is the abstinence that was preached to us some time ago when we were coming? Please, I beg to differ on what is being said concerning children's access. If you talk about adolescents, adolescents, even adolescents, will have to go through some form of knowledge and capacity building, awareness creating, to be able to appreciate issues around contraception. And that's why they're given counseling, right? In these health facilities, um, they are taken through counseling. But, um, mom, it, this is, between the devil and the deep blue sea, isn't it? So for the health practitioner, do I deny this child the contraceptive and they get pregnant and they attempt an abortion and lose their lives? It's, unfortunately, these are two equally unpleasant choices, but it appears for the health practitioner, one is better than the other, right? So how would you have them handle the situation? Children are exposed to so much on social media. Then some of them, those who are being defiled, unfortunately are exposed to predators and uh, unfortunately men who should know the right thing. They're exposed to death through abortions. Um, and then they come and say, give me a contraceptive. How do, you, how, do you, how do you want them to go about this? It appears that giving them the contraceptive is the better option. Uh, if you ask my view, I will tell you that children from the ages of 10 to maybe 18 should not use sex as their preoccupation. Rather, education should be their preoccupation. Because the sex will come after all and will continue to death. So why would you write into, into, into uh, contraception when you have your book that you need to concentrate on? That will give you the future that you need, the comfort, the decision to choose between what you want. But rather decide on 
uh, accepting something that doesn't reflect your age and whatever you are seeking to achieve in the future. So, so you're, you're, largely, you're largely making a very moral argument here, and I appreciate it. And I'm sure that many parents will, will be on your side. They will agree with you. Uh, and hopefully much later, we can open the phone lines to get interactive with our audience who may have concerns about this. Uh, but please hold on for me. Let me go back to uh, Mr. Kaba. So I was talking about other girls who are accessing other forms of contraceptives. Now, let me tell you a story. I walked into a pharmacy, and I, and I hope Martha is, is also on, because this is the story I was referencing earlier, Martha. I walked into a pharmacy. Um, I was going to pick up a drug for my son, and a young girl walks in and signals the, uh, the attendant and points to a certain form of uh, emergency contraceptive, which is a pill. And without any... Further interaction, the, the attendant just gives her the medication. And I was very um, curious. So I asked her, does this young girl know that this emergency contraceptive should be taken in a certain way? Does she know that she can't just walk into any pharmacy and take it as and when she feels like? Is she aware of the complications? And the, 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 the attendants just chuckled and said, oh, these girls, don't mind them. That's what they do. And I said, no, that's not the point. Do you give her an education? Does she know that she can't take this every other day because it's an emergency contraceptive? Mr. Kaba, so, this is troubling. So is, yeah, Martha, do you want to come in first and I'll bring so, in... Yes, yeah. yes. It, it's captured in the full documentary. Right. Where you have, I have an attendant, like you mentioned, sharing with me the girls who come in and the contraceptives, the emergency contraceptives they buy. Right. when they come in, and then sometimes, most of the time, they come in already pregnant. So they ask her, and she's a woman, she's a mother, so they ask her to help them get rid of their pregnancy. Then she tells them she doesn't do abortion there. But you can see they've gathered a lot of confidence to even talk to her about it. So oh in her voice, they'll say, Madam Pacho, dear boy, I'm a wife. Just help me. And then she tells them she cannot help. Then they will buy the, the emergency contraceptives you're mentioning. Mm. And then sometimes you mention two drugs that they often buy and combine to get rid of the pregnancy anyway. So one is um, not registered in Ghana. And I'm told it comes through the Nigerian border. Sometimes and then they are able to get it. And then they combine and they do or some go and do herbal concoctions and all others. So, yes, it is not strange. They are buying it and they are using it. But they don't get an education for most of these pharmacies. They, they could because. So this, so, this attendant actually told me sometimes she sits them down because she's worried. Yeah. And then she will talk to them. And sometimes you can see by the time she is done, they regret it. But she feels they go elsewhere mm. and will go and buy from there because they won't buy from her. And so, when um, Joyce was talking about them being too young, I understand. But they are already getting pregnant and they are buying it. Now, when you talk about the part, those who sometimes out of necessity sleep with other men, mm. she mentioned one, the, the woman, the drugstore attendant told me, there are some of them who come in and it's like they have no choice because the man who may be sleeping with her is the one taking care of her to go to school, buying her needs and doing everything for her. So when she gets talking to them and they talk about it, then her hands are tight. Yeah. Like sometimes she uses the, you are beautiful. Mm. God loves you. Mm. Maintain your purity. All those things. And by the time she is done, she knows she's done a good job. Mm. And she'll see the girl again. Yeah, yeah because the girl the must survive. Way. She must eat. And that's the only option she sees. Let me bring uh, Mr. Koboziga in here. Um, as PPAG, what are your concerns about that as well? Especially on the emergency contraceptives because even many adult women don't know that you just can go and pop an emergency contraceptive and and take it as and when you want there's very little education on that because the adverts are all over the place on radio on television on the billboards you can take this you can plan your life but they do not even come with caution on how you should take them or how many times even in a year you can take an emergency contraceptive so what is ppag doing about that Thank you very much. So, um, first of all, I just have to get back a bit. And I'm getting, uh, trying to go back a bit because, um, and I like your, your line of questioning. 
Um, as parents listening to us, they may probably be excited about the fact that abstinence, abstinence, everybody should abstain and all of that. And that is what we do here um, in our organization. The first line of defense for every young person, every individual, is abstinence. And that is what every organization and every individual is supposed to be preaching to the adolescents and the young people. But it is not working. You see, and I want to cite something. So people say, oh, young people should not be thinking about sex, they should be in school. I just cited an example where adolescent girls are having sex with adults, not their age mates, adults. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are relatives, so that they can take care of them, including giving them transportation to school or sanitary parts so that they can remain in school or to buy books. So it goes beyond our uh, uh, sentiment and opinion. I wish it was enough, but it is not. We're preaching the church, we're preaching the mosque. Parents are saying it at home, but the adolescent girls are getting pregnant. And they are not getting pregnant out of anything but sex. And if we want them to stay in school, let me just state another worrying statistic. That about 30% of school dropouts in Ghana are due to teenage pregnancy. We are not talking about abortion. We are not talking about the unreported cases or people who never go to school. We still have communities and societies giving girls of 12 years out for marriage. There are other things that border on our national moral fiber rather than... And let me say it again. It is not to say that we should jubilate for children taking up contraception. It's not as generic as it is. What I am saying is that if people are informed, and let me state again that here a child is anybody below 18 years, that is our law. But it is also our law that anybody who is 16, 1, 6 years can have sex. They are still children in our law. So children per our law in a certain age can have sex. And it is not about emotion. It is about what the law says, that if you are 16, you can have sex. So if people are allowed to have sex, the question you ask, madam, is very important. How then do we prevent them from getting pregnant? Because they have the law backing them to have sex. And that is why I am saying that if I am a development practitioner, knowing the reasons why people have sex, including rape, including defilement of over 13,000 cases recorded, where we haven't seen the state taking people to court and jailing them, I should be empowering girls to take the protection of themselves into their own hands if they start having sex. And that includes them knowing at 16 that once the law allows you to have sex, even though it's discouraged and we encourage you to practice abstinence, you should know that if you are coerced or if, like, our national institutions are not very resourceful to provide social protection, if you are coerced and, and led to have sexual intercourse. If you know that there's a, another line of defense, which right. is that you have access to contraception. Mm. And let me add that the trend of emergency pills will even be more worrying if Joy News decides to investigate it. And I'll be happy to, to, to get another specific documentary on that because that is the most dangerous aspect of contraception. It is an emergency pill, and like an emergency pill, you don't take an ambulance to the market to buy a, a food stuff. The ambulance is for the sick. The ambulance is for people who are in emergency situations. It's like that for sexual intercourse and contraception. If people take emergency pills consistently like that, which is of a several doses of the regular contraception, it has further implications than just a regular pill. Which is happening? People are taking it on weekly, daily basis, young people. Mm -hmm. And that should be our concern. Because regarding the effects of contra normal contraception on people's bodies, it's like drugs. Para has a, a side effects on people. Some people don't take it. Right. Well, well, if you take any medication, it is not everybody who can take it and not have complications. So it is for us to have a national conversation and see the way forward. As for the sentiment, all of us can do that. I right. may be very sentimental about my young people, which is disturbing to anybody's ears that a young person of 16 years is assessing contraception. And that contraception, let me add, that includes condoms. 
So if we are interested in their lives and including the other side effects of STI, then we should be asking ourselves, what do we do for these people to know that a contraception in the normal sense of an injection does not prevent you from HIV? All right. What do we put in place to prevent that? Definitely. So De listen, now mm. at this point, if we talk to anybody, all, all of us want in the space and in the nation is to protect adolescent girls. Right. Help us do that with solutions. But for, for uh, 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 blaming others and blaming the young people, mm. Until you interact with them, you will not know their plight. Uh, Mr. Koboziga, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We definitely need to continue this conversation. He is a lead coordinator, lead programs coordinator with the Planned uh, Parenthood Association of Ghana, the PPAG. Um, earlier, you heard Joyce Lanyo. If you're still on the line, Mom, just one minute for you to wrap up your thoughts. Uh, we definitely need to extend this conversation, and we hope to do so sometime soon. But quickly, in a minute, can you wrap up your thoughts for me? And I want to correct that I am the country director for International Child Development Program. Right, thanks. My concluding remark is to continue to say that at this adolescent age, or childhood stage, is sex. And uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, contraception is your pro preoccupation rather than considering your books and taking your education as a serious component of your life to break this cycle of poverty. Then in the next generation, after doing this contraception for how many years, we don't know, very soon we will have challenges because this contraception, they have issues to the extent that there is the issue of uh, not being able to give birth Right. Once you are ready. Mm. So I, as an educationist and a child rights advocate, will still talk about abstinence because at that age, that should not be your preoccupation. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Joyce Lanyo is Country Director, International Child Development Program. Martha Krenzel Aqua, producer of that documentary. Thank you so much, Martha, for doing this. You have the final word. So when are we seeing the full documentary? How can we access it? Um, how can we watch it? She will play tomorrow on Adom TV at 11.30 in the morning. And then after that, we'll upload it online so you can have access. And just so you know, the emergency contraceptive is a second part of this documentary. Okay. So when we get there, we'll talk more about that. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Martha. I am super grateful uh, that you did this. Uh, Martha Krenzel Aqua is editor with Adum TV, and she brought us uh, that documentary. You can catch the full thing just for emphasis at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow on Adum TV. Uh, and then it will be uploaded so you can watch it later online. But I would open the phone lines now. What are your thoughts? Um, it's, it's quite an interesting conversation. Uh, the numbers to call are on your screen. Please, because we've run out of time, when you call, just go straight to the point. Just tell me what you think about teens on contraceptives. Uh, the number will be on your screen, 0302 991. Um, sorry, the number has escaped me. Can we put up the number on the screen uh, quickly so that... 0302211691 is the number. 0302211691 is the number to call. Please call us. Share your thoughts with us. Um, let me know what you think. There's the moral argument and there's the legal argument. And for the health practitioner, there is the challenge of to help that child or let them go, then they commit an abortion. Um, Joseph, good morning. Let's hear you. Yeah, good morning. I wish the, the PPAG man would have been on, on the line. Because you see, this issue about family planning thing is that PPAG that is even supposed to like prevent people from getting pregnant. They are rather interested in abortion. So if your, your family planning is effective, will somebody get unwanted pregnancy? I, I don't get you. What do you mean by they are, act, they are interested in abortions? I don't understand. Yeah, because, because they are doing comprehensive abortion. Yes, that is legal. But I'm asking you, like, if you go to the health sector, if your family planning unit is very active, it's good. Will someone come with unwanted pregnancy? Now we're talking of wanting to abort it. So this whole thing about family planning and this, you see, I'm praying the day that government of Ghana will pass a law 
that family planning will be a must. People must do it. Because, let me tell you, people are going through a lot. Some young children are going through a lot. They, they become pregnant. Do, do, you wanna, you want to take us to you want to take us to some Asian countries where you're told how many children to have by hook or crook. That is it. It, it's that people's is it. choice, right? That, but you see, don't also forget that some children are prevented from going to school because of this unwanted pregnancy. All right, Joseph, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure many other people want to, to share their thoughts. 0302 Teens on contraception is what we've been discussing this morning. And um, what do you make of it? There's a moral argument about children abstaining. And then for the health practitioner, there is the, the knowledge that children are having sex anyway. But then there is also that disturbing element about 10 to 14 year old having sex which is defilement because they are not permitted by law to do so and they accessing contraceptives should we be giving it to them at all well uh christine hello good morning let me hear what you have to say good morning good morning um i think that um, on the issue of discussion parents have a very big role to play mm. If you give birth to a child, for instance, that must be your child, and then you see the responsibility to the child, of course, the child is allowed to go any mile that he wishes to get what you make him you know, move on in life. So I think part of these issues, parents have to blame for it. Mm. But Christine, there are parents who, in the, in the story we heard, who are walking their children into the facility to get them on contraceptives. So it means that they have failed as a parent. They have failed as a parent because when you have a young child, as soon as the child starts to drink, it is your role to take this girl child through sexual education, sex education. But does, it, but, this, but does this not include sexual education, Christine? What would you do if, despite all of that, you realize your child is still having sex, um, there's a possibility of a pregnancy which may, may hinder their education? Bernice, I want to tell you that if we take up our parental role and we keep on educating the child, telling him, telling her the consequences of being pregnant or the consequences of having sex, she will listen to you. Because like we earlier on said, these girls do it not for pleasure. They do it to get their active. And so if you take up the challenge as a parent to provide this young child with what she needs to keep her up, I'm not sure she'll go in to do that. If Thank you so not, much, uh, Christine. I, I appreciate your, your thoughts. Thank you for joining the program. I'm sure I'll have time to pick it couple more calls um, and I'll be excited to do so because I want to hear what you have to say about teens on contraception and uh, it's, it's not a straightforward thing it's quite a delicate matter Emmanuel joins us hello Emmanuel let's hear you yes um, I want to contribute to this family planning that please go ahead that. yes the issue is uh, uh, more often than not people who get this unwanted pregnancy. They are very much aware of the consequences before they start. Any girl child who gets pregnant, about 90% of them are aware of this family planning, but they decide to opt for unprotected sex. And any late girl who also engaged in unprotected sex, is very much aware of the possible consequence of getting pregnant. But they opt for the pleasure more than the protection. You understand? Mm. So, looking at the various uh, scenarios, we cannot underestimate the relevance of uh, family planning and uh, uh, maybe abortion or something of that sort. Because right. even if the parents decide not to let the girls have a boss. By the time you realize they have gone their own way to do the unexpected and we all know the the consequences uh, of that. The possible consequences. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. That's all time will allow us. I appreciate your comments. And uh, like Martha said, when the second part of this 
uh, documentary is ready, we will have another conversation and uh, hopefully it will be uh, one that allows for more interaction with you. I am grateful that you joined us on this edition of the AM Show. I'm Bernice Abubedu Lansa. Earlier you saw Samuel Kojo Brace uh, bring us that conversation with two parliamentary candidates of the NDC uh, who just won the just ended primaries. Before I go, let me say happy birthday to you. I said, oh, say much love, more blessings. Mommy and daddy say they love you and they wish you long life and prosperity. And also from all your friends at church. And let me say thank you to Dewey G-H-D-O-U-E underscore Ghana. You can find them on Instagram for my beautiful dress. Well, that'll be it. Up next is News Desk. Do stay.